A portion of this video is sponsored by Scan Computers and Nvidia. Should you build or buy your gaming PC? It's been a huge question for years, but in 2021, it is a whole other ball game. There are several issues when buying a PC right now, and all of them are hurting PC gamers. The biggest is all about availability. It's affected all parts of a typical system, but the worst thing by far are graphics cards. They're just so specialist to make that demand is far stripping supply, which not only means that the cards aren't available on the shelves, but the ones that you can find elsewhere are often so inflated in price that it's just not feasible or sensible to actually buy one. I've already discussed the shortage in much greater detail, including when it will end. You can find that video in the top right corner of your screen if you're interested. But the TLDR is that if you do want to buy a gaming computer in 2021, then it is going to be very difficult. And actually, buying a pre-build really might make a lot of sense. There are two types of pre-build, OEM and System Integrator. An OEM machine is built from the ground up as a dedicated product, and it's much more of a singular item rather than a collection of parts. That's not actually true in reality, as all the pre-builds that I've used will have off the shelf or at least non-bespoke parts in it somewhere, be it RAM, processor or graphics card. The positive thing about all of this is that everything has been designed to work together perfectly, and in theory you can get a beautiful gaming PC that's actually a little bit cheaper and often comes in a smaller size. Again, it doesn't normally work like this though, as companies ultimately need to make money, so even if they are a little bit cheaper to produce, this probably just becomes a little bit of extra profit margin. Take the HP Omen 25L for example. HP supplied this for a sponsored video a few weeks back, and you'll notice that it will start at a higher price, with plenty of room for it to drop with promos over time. Essentially, whenever you're looking at an OEM machine, make sure you keep a close eye on the price to ensure you're getting a great deal. This Corsair 1 is a great idea of what OEM machines can do for form factor, as it would be very difficult to create something like this yourself without precisely the right components, and even then it would be a very tricky build to undertake, so if you find an OEM PC that you love the look of, then that's certainly a winner. These machines are also the most console-like and definitely the easiest to run, as all you need to do is take it out of the box, plug it into some power, hook it up to a TV or a monitor, and you're away. You get a copy of Windows pre-installed, so there's no expense or hassle there, and you also never need to open up the machine yourself, and you certainly don't need to tweak or even know what the BIOS is. A huge benefit to machines like this is also that they're very popular, which means there are going to be both professional and user reviews online, so you can see if this is any good before you commit to buying it. Support is also another great reason to go for a pre-build, as not only do you not need to know how to construct it in the first place, but if something goes wrong, then you get a dedicated line of support. For some builds, this will be over the phone or via email, while others you can actually take it back into the store that you bought it from. My pet peeve with pre-builds though is all about upgradability, because let's say you wanted to go for something a little bit bigger, well, it's not always possible. It's a bit like the lunch menu at a fancy restaurant. You can see loads of different options, but the chances of you getting your perfect meal are probably quite slim. The ability to add extra components before you buy are usually limited, if existent at all, and after the fact you can actually find some really weird quirks. The Omen 25L, for example, can fit extra fans and CPU cooling inside, but it lacks the standard mounting hardware that would make upgrading it really quick and easy. Loads of pre-builds don't even allow for any upgradability at all, which is just so frustrating! Mini meltdown aside for a second, the final thing to note on pre-builds is with the spec sheet. It is absolutely imperative to look very closely at the parts list, as you'll often find last-gen hardware inside that is way slower than what's currently available. This isn't necessarily an issue if the pricing matches the spec and you're getting a great deal, but you do need to go in knowing exactly what it is that you're purchasing. So what about option two then? Buying from a system integrator. Well, this is the option that gets you loads of benefits that you'd find from actually building it yourself, but without actually building it yourself. Looks like I've got really long arms if I do this, look. Whoa! I'm always keen to recommend these because it's the perfect gateway into PC gaming for anyone that's feeling a little bit too nervous to try a DIY, or for those that just don't have the time. SI builds are made up almost entirely of off-the-shelf parts that you could be buying yourself, and are then assembled in-house by a team of PC experts. Cable management is usually a little bit better than you'd actually be able to do yourself, and just like an OEM build, Windows is installed for you and is ready to go out of the box. It is super easy to configure a PC to your exact specification, and it allows for upgrades to your PC both before and after you've built it, and unlike OEM builds, most PC builders are up to date with the latest components pretty much from the get-go. This is all starting to sound quite positive, but there's got to be some downsides, right? Well, yes there are, but to be honest, nothing really too serious. 
Ultimately, money talks, and in the system integrated game, there are loads of deals that are made behind the scenes that allow for you to buy that gaming PC at the affordable price. Nothing sketchy or anything, don't worry, but you might find that particular brands or specific components are cheaper thanks to bulk deals that the integrator has made internally with their supplier. This means that while your choices are varied, they're definitely not endless, and the extra charges to swap to a different part might not actually offer such great value. Besides, if you're really after a very specific item, so something like the Meshlicious case for example, or anything that is just a bit more niche, chances are it probably won't be stocked in the first place. I do like that pre-overclocked and pre-watercooled PCs do exist though, so if you're after something really over the top and you've got a big budget, but you don't really want to try anything too risky yourself, then you can get hold of that gear, but again, without having to do it yourself. Downsides that you should consider are shipping damage, as system integrator machines can't truly offer bespoke packaging like OEMs can, there's hidden costs like free peripherals that are often pretty crap, and the fact that in a normal world, paying someone to build it all for you does result in a more expensive gaming PC. But here's the thing, at the moment, buying an in-stock at RRP gaming PC might actually offer fantastic value for money. I've definitely heard of a lot of people that are actually buying pre-built PCs right now just for the GPU. But of course, there is an alternative to all of this, buying a gaming laptop. Scan Computers and Nvidia are having a huge sale right now on some awesome gaming laptops, and now could finally be your time to get gaming. Thanks to Nvidia's Ampere architecture, these gaming laptops are powerful enough to crush the latest games at sky high frame rates, and pack the latest features such as support for the frame rate boosting DLSS technology and real time ray tracing. This means that you'll not only be able to get true next generation visuals in games like Battlefield 2042, but also super smooth gameplay. Deals include the RGB touting Strix G15 for just £840, an AORUS 144Hz RTX 3060 laptop bundle all for under £1000, and £500 off the crazy powerful ROG Strix Scar. Get yours today with that link down below. Let's chat about the most fun option now, building your own gaming PC. For real, if you can't already tell, I freaking love building gaming PCs, as the level of customization, the sense of achievement, and of course, those sweet sweet frames per second are just so rewarding. Pressing a power button that you wired up yourself is such an exhilarating thing. I'll never forget my first time. It didn't work properly because I'd wired it up wrong. The benefits usually come in two flavours, price and flexibility. Price rings true on all but the GPUs at the moment, as by purchasing the components yourself, you're cutting the middleman out entirely and leaving his cut in your back pocket. It's not that you can't get a well-priced graphics card, it's just that it's incredibly difficult to do so. Hopefully in a few months, if not a year or so, we might be able to go back to the good old days where you can actually choose exactly which cooler you want. Imagine that. And that's the beautiful thing about self-building. You can research every component individually, and then just buy whatever you think is best. Intel or AMD, air or liquid cooling, big case or small, it doesn't matter, it's all up to you. Remember that a copy of Windows will need to be provided by yourself, so do factor that in when you're doing your sums, but otherwise you can compare exactly how expensive a self-build is versus all of the other options to see what works out the best. And I know what you're thinking, how difficult actually is it to build a gaming PC? Well, honestly, really not that hard. I think that the biggest comfort that I can give you is that that exact question has been asked millions of times before by other PC builders, and almost all of them have had a great experience. Yes, you will need to have some basic know-how, but there are tons of great PC build guides on the channel that can help you through it, and by learning exactly what every component does and where it goes, if something does go wrong, then you're gonna know how to fix it yourself. Obviously, yes, you can break something. Oh no! It is certainly possible, I have done it myself once or twice. I think that... But remember that at this stage, I've probably built about 150 gaming PCs, so I guess it was gonna happen eventually. Of course, you don't get that telephone support like you would with a pre-build, but every component does have its own warranty, and in many cases, these are actually a lot longer than you'd get on a fully assembled machine anyway. This isn't gonna save you from making bad component choices though, so do make sure that you test out compatibility on all of your parts before you buy them, otherwise you might find yourself crying under a table and screaming to the world that you should have just bought a Mac. So where does all of this leave us then? Well, unlike my video a few years ago, 
Even if you're a keen PC builder, there is no right option. The easiest to buy stock at RRP is probably going to be found in pre-builds, especially in OEM systems, as these are all ordered and fulfilled separately to box components, so these will only ever be sold as systems. If you do decide to go down this route though, you will need to do your research heavily into performance, thermals and upgrades, because at the end of the day, a bad or overpriced PC is still just that. If you're lucky though, and you can get hold of a GPU, then as always, building a gaming PC is going to be my favourite option, because I think it is the most fun, and actually being able to customise a PC and get exactly what you want is actually going to be, well, not priceless, but it's definitely going to be worth the price for most people. Let me know your thoughts on this. Would you build? Would you buy? Does this even matter to you? Smash the like button, get yourself subscribed, and you can find my favourite PC components linked in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.